last night, this little hut I'm in had about five bike packers in it. So, in the evening, we all sat round and shared our stories. But I started feeling a little bit insecure because when we were talking about distances, some of these guys are doing 120 kilometers a day. So my 50 seems like nothing. Now I sat there thinking, how the bloody hell do they do this? And it wasn't until I woke up at eight and all of them had gone. Anyway, so listening to all these people tell me about the extreme distances they're going, the times they're waking up, it has inspired me. I'm intrigued to see how much I can push my body, how much I can push my mind by waking up early and traveling 120 kilometers. But I'll do that tomorrow. Today, I'll do my normal cycling. All jokes aside though, it does go to show that there's so many different ways that you can do cycle touring. You can have the one where you do 100 plus kilometers a day, gunning for the next location, on the bike for 10 hours a day, get to the campsite, cook food, wake up early, rinse and repeat. You've then got the more comfortable method, which is, I'd say, what I'm doing, which is about 50 kilometers a day. You take your time, I spend about three hours on the bike, six hours on the journey, so I can stop, experience places. You then get time in the morning and time in the evening to do what you want. Then, whilst I was cycling, I was just thinking of like a middle method where, could you cycle 120 kilometers in a day, and then take the next day off, cycle 120, take the next day off, or would you not have enough time to recover in between? I'm not sure if any of you that watch me actually bike pack or cycle tour yourself, but if you do, let me know what approach you take. I'd be interested to find out. But for now, I need to continue cycling. I'm 40k in and it's not even four o'clock today. That's unheard of for me. Maybe the conversations with the other cyclists last night has sparked something in my brain. I don't think I'm going for the 100k today, but it's definitely going to be more than 50. I don't feel too bad, my back's hurting, hence why I'm lying down, but that's because I'm wearing the rucksack, it's inevitable. Other than that, I don't feel too bad. But now I'm just going to have some food and then get back on the bike. Sixty kilometers in, and I've accidentally began to dip my toes into the distances that I claimed this morning would wait until tomorrow. But truthfully, once you get over the neck pain and the back pain, it becomes almost meditative, as in in a state of meditation. That twenty kilometers has taken me about an hour, and I've probably thought I've probably had thoughts flowing through my brain for half of that. So I'm beginning to understand why the people this morning do these longer distances but I don't think I'm gonna to go too much more. Ignore what I just said. I've just checked my phone and the nearest campsite that doesn't require me to go back where I've just come from is 15 kilometers away. <laughs> oh, the irony. Hey, if things couldn't get any worse, the reception's closed. Apparently it might reopen in 30 minutes. So I've got to wait. If it doesn't, I'm screwed. Bonsoir. Bonjour, uh, parlez-tu anglais? Uh, little English. Uh, uh, un poisson, un tont, un oui tonight? Yes. Yeah? Yes, what time you, what uh, time you coming to the campsite? Uh, in 30 minutes. Oh, yes, come on. Right, sorted. Now I've got another 30 minute bike ride. 